you fits back again dude today i got a video i'd like to dedicate to a very special young man in my life who mm, like myself has done and am continuing to do apparently going through a bunch of bull in life because golly y'all know like i done told you life can beat you down well today we're talking about stoicism because oh man y'all know i've been through the ringer i mean ever since i was a young child but i didn't allow it to turn me into an old bitter hateful person no i think that it's opened my heart and made me be able to care and love for people and to actually mm, you know give a, a hoot about uh how other people feel think and at the same time give a big hoot about myself so i don't know y'all probably heard of stoicism right you we've talked about it before now about that marcus aurelius man i learned how to pronounce this one earlier today and i done forgot it i'm gonna call it epiticus hepatitis gum. it don't really matter man rose by any other name smells just sweet you know what i'm saying so we talk about what is stoicism right it's a philosophy designed to help people live their best possible lives it's a philosophy of life man i'm sorry about that daggum airplane up there ain't much i can do about it it's a philosophy of life that maximizes positive emotions reduces negative emotions and helps individuals hone their virtues of character because man don't you want to like be a person of good character i hope you do i know all the people that have been jacking with me lately i hate to tell it to them but they really need to go work on their character see at any moment in any situation and at any stage in life young or old stoicism provides a framework for living from for living well it reminds people of what's truly important, providing practical strategies to get more of what is valuable. Man, this goes back ways. Like, we can talk about the history of it and all, like back to the Roman Empire and starting in like a little before BC and all the way up through Marcus Aurelius and everything else. But I really don't think we have time for all that. But we'll just say that Stoicism was deliberately created to be understandable actionable and useful and practicing stoicism doesn't require learning an entirely new philosophical lexicon or meditating for hours a day instead it offers immediate useful and practical ways to find tranquility and to improve one's own strengths of character so talk about stoicism a little bit and we're also going i guess probably just go over which is what we got time for is you know the four big virtues of stoicism and through that maybe we'll bring up a little bit of the history lives and past of some of the great stoic leaders of history the four virtues of stoicism get your courage temperance justice and wisdom we're going to talk about them a little bit. And I do think it would be a good idea to kind of relate that to some of the great Stoic leaders, not only of our day. Well, I'm not even sure if we have one of our day. But, you know, when you read in the history books of like your parents' day, your grandparents' day, something like that. Uh, but kind of also a lot of us relate to these Stoic thoughts and philosophies. Because... These four virtues, they're the most essential values in Stoic philosophy. Right that old Marcus Aurelius, y'all know he was emperor of Rome. He was actually groomed, sort of, to be emperor of Rome. Um, it, it doesn't even matter. But, he, you know, he wrote the book Meditations. And that was just, you know, basically his memoirs a little bit. He said, at some point in your life, you should come across anything better than justice, truth, self-control and courage it must be an extraordinary thing indeed that was like actually about 20 centuries ago that's like 2000 years 
And since then, y'all know we've discovered all kinds of stuff through science and engineering, blah, blah, blah. But ask yourself this. Have we found anything better than being brave, than moderation and sobriety, than doing what's right, or anything better than truth and understanding? It's a very good question because I think those things are kind of you can't beat it let's talk about courage because you know the world always wants to have some kind of category to put you in something to label as you right you're, you're this you're that da -da 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 -da. well that's why kind of the world life however you want to put it will occasionally send difficult situations your way but you got to think of these not as inconvenience or even tragedies but as opportunities as questions to answers. Are you with me? Do I have cojones? Am I brave? Am I going to face this problem or run away from it? Will I stand up or will I be rolled over? And I'm going to tell y'all what. My current situation, you ain't knocked me down yet. And it's going to take a whole lot more than you've been throwing at me to put me on the ground. You got to let your actions etch a response into the record because it's our actions. Are you with me? And let them remind you of why courage is one of the most important things. And it takes a whole lot to have courage. And maybe to kind of talk about why that's important, let's go over the life of old Epictetus a little bit. Like, comment, and subscribe, people. You know his baby lives off your subscriptions. <laughs> See, he was a, a slave in the Roman Empire, and he was actually a really mistreated slave. So, I mean, you know, imagine yourself uh, being a slave. I mean, it's kind of hard to imagine, but kind of not. Like, always having someone tell you what to do, what you can eat, everything else. So, I mean, he wasn't in the best of situations. But, he started to learn under this feller, what was his daggum name, Musanius Rufus. He started to kind of learn some of these stoic things. There came a point in life where Epictetus' ma master, he was kind of getting on to him about something. and started taking his leg and bending it backwards. And enduring the pain with complete composure. Epictetus looked up. And just basically told his master, hey, you're going to break my leg. And then it broke. And he looked at him and said, there, did I not tell you it would break? But he wasn't being rude. He was just mm, enduring the pain that life throws at us in a very, golly, physically painful way. From that time on. Epidus was what they call lame, which that just means like you can't walk, you walk with a limp. So he had to go the rest of his life with this limp. But that's one common thread about a lot of these great Stoic leaders. Not that they all had broke legs and were limping, you know, but that they endured some severious hardship, losing their children, you know, watching friends, family members, loved ones die, and themselves enduring torture even marcus aurelius was one when the big plague hit rome he was the the leader of rome and they said it was one of the you know top five best emperors of rome he wouldn't leave he was going to stay there and use whatever little knowledge he could to help people even though he's done lost his kids but he did it and that takes a lot of courage my gosh courage it's just like mm, it's hard to maintain at times but we'll go over some stoic quotes in a minute that'll maybe help us all be able to remind ourselves and look over when we look in the mirrors and we ourselves say you know what maybe at this moment in life i need to muster up a little bit more courage now we move on to talk about temperance which I will tell you, and I'll be honest with you, times in my life, I have had issues with temperance. But, something I work on, 
and something I've come a long way with because life's not so simple so we can just say courage is the only thing that counts. While we may all admit that courage is essential, we're also well aware of people whose bravery turns into recklessness and becomes a fault when they start to endanger themselves or others. And this is where old Aristotle comes in. Because Aristotle actually used courage as the main example in his famous metaphor of golden mean. Y'all ever heard about the golden mean? On one end of the spectrum, he said there was cowardice. And that's just a deficiency of courage. But on the other end of the spectrum, there was recklessness. Basically, too much courage. So, what was called for, required at that point, was a golden mean. That's just the right amount of each. You got your just enough cowardice and just enough courage, you're good. And at that point, you are also practicing temperance. It's like doing nothing in excess and doing the right thing in the right amount in the right way. Because we are what we repeatedly do. That's why Aristotle also said, therefore excellence is not an act, but a habit. In other words, virtue and excellence is a way of living. It's foundational. It's like an operating system. And the code the system operates on is habit. Later on, old Epictetus said, capability is confirmed confirmed and grows in its corresponding actions walking by walking running by running therefore if you want to do something make a habit of it so if you want to be happy you want to be successful you want to be great you want to you have to develop the capability we have to develop the day-to-day -day habits that allow us to ensue that's really actually great news because it means that impressive results or enormous changes are possible without Herculean effort or magic formulas. Small adjustments, good systems, and right processes. That is what it takes. Next we move on to justice. Being brave, finding the right balance. Those are surgic stoic virtues, but in their seriousness, they pale in comparison to what the Stoics worshipped most highly, which was doing the right thing. There is no more important Stoic virtue than justice, because it influences all the others. Go back to Mr. Marcus Aurelius. He himself said that justice is the source of all other virtues. And Stoics throughout history have pushed and advocated for justice. Even go back look at old Teddy Roosevelt, George Washington, don't know if you knew this, they were stoic men as well. Y'all know, man, talk about courage and justice. Teddy Roosevelt, he got shot with a 38 about to go up and give a speech. Hit him about right here somewhere. He had, uh, luckily, he had like an eyeglass case and his speech folded in there. And, yo, know, yeah, he got shot. But he went up there on stage and he said, I don't know if y'all know this, but I just got shot. But basically, I got something to say. And he stood up there and gave a 90-minute speech after getting shot in the freaking chest. Isn't that something? George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, they formed a new nation. One which would seek, however imperfectly, to fight for democracy and justice. Largely inspired by the philosophy of Cato and other Stoics. Now where we've come from there... I hate to say it, but I imagine them men are rolling over in their graves. Regardless, that's where they were at at the time. A Stoic sees the world clearly, but also sees what it can be. And I'm not just talking about how monstrous the world can be towards us. I'm talking about the good as well. Then, the Stoic is brave and strategic enough to help bring this, what the world could be, the goodness, into reality. And the last virtue we'll speak of today is wisdom. And like I told y'all, wisdom can come with age, but it doesn't always have to come with age. Like, there can be a wise man of, I don't know, put him at teenage years, who actually maintains more wisdom 
than someone who has grown into their seventh decade. It's not always the case, but I, you don't understand what I'm saying. Because we talk about courage, temperance, and justice. They are critical virtues of life. But what situations call for courage? What's the right amount? What is the right thing? This is where the final and essential virtue comes in. And that's wisdom. The knowing. The learning. The experience required to navigate the world. Wisdom has always been prized by the Stoics. Zeno said, We were given two ears and one mouth for a reason, to listen more than we talk. And, since we have two eyes, we're obligated to read and observe more than we talk as well. And today it's really key, as it was to the ancient world, to be able to distinguish between the vast aggregations of information that lay at your disposal and the actual wisdom you need to live a good life. It's key what we study. It's key that we always keep our minds open. You cannot learn that which you already know, says Mr. Epictus, and it's true, which is why we need to not only be humble students, but also seek great teachers. It's why we should always be reading. It's why we cannot stop training. It's why we have to be diligent in filtering out the signal from the noise. The goal is not just to acquire information, but the right kind of information. It's a lot of the lessons you can go find in Mr. Marcus Aurelius's book, Meditations. And if any of you want that book, let me know and I'll see if I can't get you a copy. In everything from the actual Epictetus to James Stockdale entering the world of Epictetus, which I believe that's the man who did a lot of the translations of Epictetus' writings, it's the key facts standing out from the background noise that you need to absorb. We've got thousands of years of blazing insight available to this world. It is likely that you have the power to learn anything you want right at your fingertips. So today, honor the stoic virtue of wisdom by slowing down, being deliberate, and finding the wisdom you need. Two eyes, two ears, one mouth. Remain a student. Act accordingly and wisely. Now, let's just go over a couple of stoic quotes that I really like and wrap this sucker up. Marcus Aurelius, waste no more time arguing what a good man should be, be one. Another Marcus Aurelius, actually a couple more, let's just roll through these suckers. Think of the life you have lived until now as over, and as a dead man, see what's left as a bonus, and live it according to nature. Love the hand that fate deals you. And play it as your own, for what could be more fitting. In your actions, don't procrastinate. In your conversations, don't confuse. In your thoughts, don't wander. And in your soul, don't be passive or aggressive. In your life, don't be all about business. If it's not right, do not do it. If it's not true, do not say it. The best revenge is not to be like your enemy. Choose not to be harmed, and you won't feel harmed. Don't feel harmed, and you haven't been. It's time you realize that you have something more powerful and miraculous than the things that affect you and make you dance like a puppet. External things are not the problem. It's your assessment of them which you can erase right now. If anyone can refute me, show me I'm making a mistake, looking at things from the wrong perspective. I'll gladly change. It's the truth I'm after, and the truth never harmed anyone. You could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. And 
Hmm, I like this one. Be tolerant of others and strict with yourself. Man. That's just that's just a whole lot of really great wisdom there. I mean, and this is from people who have been beat down more than probably many of us could imagine. Yet stood up, realized life was going to throw it at them and that life is tough. Learned how to put a smile on their face and learned how to not only bear what was necessary, but to love it. A more fiat. Man, I hope any of y'all out there going through these struggles in life, whether you're going through bad divorces and all kinds of legal battles, or going through other stuff that we go through earlier in life, which is like basically jackasses at school, uh, or, you know, people you look up to, and love and respect but at the same time you don't feel that those people are really understanding you deep down whatever it may be hopefully some of this helped one of y'all you know i love each and every one of you with all my heart if y'all know if there's anything i can do i will try to do it thank you for sitting through this oh it's t fitz and i'm out